Well, here's a good shot of the 6RR car. That is, indeed, Ralphie the Racer Liguori out of Tampa, Florida. 68 years young, still getting it done. Goes back all the way, started his career way back in 1949. His best championship finish would be second in the Hoosier 100 back in the early 70s, but this guy has been doing this thing for a long, long time, and very interesting gentleman, Ralphie the Racer Liguori. It's not often we get a chance to see this guy at Limerland. Bill Holder talked to him earlier on, too. Let's go down and check it out. This is Ralph Liguori, and Ralph, uh, most guys uh, your age are, are sitting back in an easy chair, uh, and here you are out here in a, in a high-powered midget. I, wish it, I hope it's high-powered tonight so I can win a race. Now, you've been, uh, been running these cars for how long? I started my, I drove my first race car in 1949 uh -huh. in New York City, uh, Freeport, Long Island. And you've driven midgets and sprint cars and what else? Midgets, sprint cars, uh, dirt cars, indie cars, uh, stock cars. I, I was, uh, I run NASCAR for several years, even motorcycles. Is that right? Yeah. Which uh, one do you, uh, do you like the best? The one that wins. The one that wins. <laughs> <laughs> I like them all. It, I just love the sport. And I like the people in it. I, you know, it's a good sport and it's good. Mostly there's good people in it. Now, uh, do you feel that, that your skills have deteriorated at all? Do you feel that you're just as good a driver today with, with greater experience than you were, say, 15, 20 years ago? Well, I have to admit that I'm a little more cautious than I used to be. You know, uh, I don't want to spend any more time between the sheets. I've had enough of that. So uh, if I see a place where it's, you know, do or die, uh, well, I don't do it for a while. I, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait another lap now. Yeah, the cars, of course, have evolved tremendously over the years, and uh, this car here, compared to your first midget, uh, no comparison. No, this is mind-boggling, the way the cars are now. My first midget was a V860, you know, V8 Ford 60 and, a, and a, an old Curtis chassis, yeah. the first one I ever had. I cannot imagine driving a car like this, if you just turn around a little bit here, without this thing on the top, without the cage, and you obviously drove them before they had this. I sure did. Uh, I drove them until 1957 without them, from 1949 to 57. They didn't, we didn't have road cages. But they have saved a lot of lives, but it's put a lot of idiots out there, too. You know, before the guys, uh, you know, be, now when somebody crashes, they say, I wonder if he's hurt. In my time, when somebody crashed, we say, I wonder if he's dead, because you knew damn well he was hurt. There was no protection here, was there? Nothing. Just a little loop on the back here sometimes. No, there wasn't even a loop on the back. When I first started, all there was was the tail right so here. So if you went over, what did you do? You, you tried to get as low as possible. Well, like they say, we crawled in the basement. <laughs> 21 laps down, nine laps remain. The leader in car number 48 is Steve Knepper. Running second is still Brian Gerstner. Running third, Jack Runyon and Mel Kenyon. The veteran works his way up to fourth. We're under green. Picking up the pace in three and four. The leader is still Steve Knepper in 48. He seems to have it all figured out tonight. Knepper in the 48 car. Running second is still the 29 of him there. That's the 29 of Brian Gerster working on working on a lap car off turn number four, but we're under caution again. Yeah, up in turn one, you'll see it there. In turn one, under caution for that reason, someone has clobbered the cone and has dragged it back to turn one with him. For that reason, we're under caution. Picking up the pace off turn four, 22 laps on the board, eight to go. Our leader is still car number 48, Steve Knepper from Belleville, Illinois. Knepper shows the way, back to three and four, no problem for Knepper tonight. He seems to have it all in order and working very well. Here's the race for second. Mel Kenyon, the veteran, beginning to peak inside of the 21, 29 car, Brian Gerster. Let's follow that, yeah. Mel Kenyon came all the way from row seven, the veteran working inside of the 29 car of Gerster. Back in one and two, Kenyon peeks inside of Gerster for that second spot. Great, great midget racing off turn two. Great close up. Young and old, Brian Gerster, the talented young speedster out of Indianapolis, Indiana, going at it with the 
62 year young veteran Mel Kenyon in 61. Kenyon still working on Gerster. Great, great open wheel racing here. With laps winding down, Kenyon again peaks inside of Gerster off turn four. Now side to side and wheel to wheel. Kenyon is definitely there and definitely putting the heat on Gerster. Now more than that, it's Kenyon with a wheel out in front and Gerster battles right back. Kenyon working the low end, Gerstner, the high side off turn four. Great, great open wheel, Neymar's midget racing compliments of Kenyon who works the low end with Gerstner still tucked against the cushion on the high side. Meanwhile, the 48 car has checked out for good. The race is here for second off turn four. White flag coming out next time by. White flag coming out next time by, but the race here is a hot one. The 29 car of Gerster up on the cushion, gets way up on the cushion, opens the door from Al Canyon. Off turn four, the white flag is in the air for the 48 car of Steve Knepper, who has this one in the bag. We'll pick up the pace there. Off turn number four, Knepper will take the checkers easily. Let's work back farther and check the race for second. Off turn four, here it is, Kenyon with now a wheel out in front. Off turn number four, Kenyon, or maybe not, I don't know. Too close to tell for now. Kenyon and Gerster came across the final stripe dead even for the second spot. But our winner, car number 48 from Belleville, Illinois, is indeed Mr. Steve Knepper.